stand if you're able to lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the order roll call starting on my right. Councilperson Josh Arn. Councilperson Brent Byer. Mayor Jimmy John King. Councilperson Craig Anderson. Councilperson Jeremy Ellison. We'll be looking for approval of tonight's agenda. Is there any additions from staff? Anything from here? We'll move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. That will carry. Now we'll look at the regular meeting minutes of September 24th, 2024. Approve, approve those and see what you think. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second that. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That will carry. Finance and budget. You got the accounts payable with the additional listing there. Any questions? We'll direct them to Finance Director Carl. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve the budget or the finances there. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That will carry. It takes it into motions to general business. First item on, under general business tonight is presentation on the Highway 30 Improvement Project feedback analysis. You got your on. All right. Well, thank you for uh, letting us come down tonight and share with you some more. So myself, Tom Austin, project manager for the Highway 30 Project. And with me is our one of our public engagement coordinators, Cindy Morgan, from uh, District 6 as well. So I think you got a copy of the summary from the engagement, I hope. Yeah. So I just really, I don't have a presentation, a formal one. I just wanted to go through this with you and really take an opportunity to try to answer any additional questions you had and really um, kind of move the project along to the next step. So just walking through this real quick, uh, we had two uh, engagements, as you know, um, and through the process of those two engagements, there's 31 properties along Highway 30. We had contact with 22 of the 30, so about 70% of them. Um, not everybody left a comment card feedback, but a lot did have comments uh, informally at the meetings or by phone. So kind of that's summarized there. So then just a quick analysis by location. So we had 11 properties on the north side that provided feedback, seven that preferred option B, which is, okay, so option B is kind of the, the leave things as they are option, right? We'll put the curbs back where they are, we'll really leave the curbs and only adjust them where they're needed to be. And we're gonna to try to make the ADA compliance work within the kind of boundaries that are there. It's gonna be, it's going to be a challenge and it's going to be a little ugly, but I think we can do it. So it's an option, okay? So we got to present that as an option. That was B, you said, right? That's B. So of the 11 Northside properties that recorded feedback, seven preferred option B. Three actually preferred option A that were Northside properties. And one uh, provided comments, but no rating. They didn't have a preference. Five stated a preference to keep parking on the north side. Um, and two of those specifically mentioned St. John's, which I want to just mention, I think, and so that's, you know, that's one of the things that we're doing when we're engaging with the public, is we can sit in the office and we can look at our engineering and we think we know things, and we do, we know a lot, we learn a lot, um, but sometimes there's a lot of value in just meeting the public and understanding what their needs are and how they're using the facility, because I actually had no idea how important that north side parking was to St. John's for a lot of their functions. So, and I think we talked about this at the second meeting, we went back as a design team and talked about it and said, you know, this is really a fatal flaw because it's not functioning the way it needs to be for them. So what we did is we went back and designed an enclave, kind of a bump out, and I think we can get at least four or maybe even five parking spots along the north side in that option A, bump it out and put some parking in there in front of the, in front of the church. So. That's one of the things that's really beneficial in that engagement is learning some of those things. So two specifically mentioned Northside Parking for St. John's and the, um, how that was gonna be a problem for them. Four of the respondents cited concerns about their driveway, exiting their driveway, and that's just really, um, when I talked to folks, it was really just the, the backing out into the narrower lane and 
and they were concerned about that. So, and that's fine, that's a, that's a valid concern and we wanna learn that. Um, and then there was four that cons expressed concerns about the narrow roadway and what that impact would be like with larger ag vehicles and the traffic volumes on 30. So that's kind of the analysis by location on the north side. The four south side properties that did record feedback, all four favored option A. Um, two stated they preferred less impacts to their property. Two noted the design is improving safety. Um, none expressed concern about exiting their driveway. I think that's probably a reflection of the fact that they have parking on their side, so it feels more comfortable, maybe. Um, two spoke with, uh, we did speak with two additional individuals at the second meeting with a preference for, preference for option A due to increased safety, but as I noted before, not everybody left formal feedback, so that was just uh, through conversation. Uh, and in addition to the north side and the south side differentiation, um, eight individuals were outside of the actual po property, uh, the project limits. So they're just in the second meeting citywide. And uh, four of those eight preferred option A, with one mentioning a favor for ADA compliance. One of the eight was neutral, um, did mention a preference for north side parking, and then three preferred option B of the, of the eight individuals that were outside of the project area. Um, and then just at the bottom is just taking all the numbers, running them down just strictly by the numbers um, of the 22 respondents, both by feedback or by phone or by conversation. 13 had a preference for A, 10 had a preference for B, <coughs> two were ne neutral, which is, which is fine. Um, I mean, and like we talked at the, more, at the meeting, it's really not a, like a, a voting thing. It's more of engaging and understanding, trying to learn what the public's needs are and really understanding you know, how they feel about the project. So uh, with that, did you guys have any additional questions or things that you were wanting some more information on or some clarification? I don't know if you wanted to add anything, Cindy? Yeah, I, if, if I could, I'll, I'll add up just a little bit as I ran the analysis on comments. I mean, it was pretty clear that um, we were seeing that division of north versus south side. You know, who's going to have more impacts and that perceived impacts. Um, and so, to me, it just really spoke volumes of, like, you know, we're kind of picking winners and losers at this point in, in these individuals' eyes. Um, and, and so, unfortunately, like, it's really nice when everybody agrees, but we didn't get that out of this particular situation, like a, a clear direction about which way to take it. And so as I advised Tom, it's like, it feels more like we maybe just have to come down to uh, what we feel is the best choice, and especially, like, engineering-wise, like, maybe that becomes a higher factor in some of that decision-making then, too. Um, because most folks were more vocal on the north side, but some of the threads that I saw indicated more of like um, perceived loss, which you know tends to make people really more vocal, where the south side didn't leave as many comments, um, potentially because uh, they didn't perceive that loss as much. They felt like maybe it could be an improvement for them and what they're currently at. Um, so those were some of the larger themes that, that I noticed when I wrote down what the survey had said. We haven't finished discussing how we're going to light either, have we? No, not completely. I think, um, you know, we were talking about eliminating some of the continuous lighting after second and looking at more intersection lighting, which would be a significant cost savings yeah. for the city. Um, and we had some high level, we looked at some high level costs on that, uh, but not, it's not nailed down. I did talk to our traffic folks, and I know um, when we talked before, we were talking about how the city would have to do the engineering of those of that lighting system. And I think we have agreement within the district that we could do the intersection lighting design as well. Um, we probably have to do the, the continuous system, that first block, but the intersection lighting itself beyond that, we can take that on as well and be able to do the engineering of that. So I mean, there'd still be a city cost for the, the actual work, but the engineering of it, I think we can, we can take care of that. So if you, if you guys settle on what you're going to do, I mean, you decide which way you're going? So, I mean, we talked about that a little bit as a project team and this is in the district, and we kind of feel like, we, we feel pretty strongly that there's a lot of benefit to A, to the road diet, reducing the road. There's just the safety benefit of the fact that it is a proven benefit in slowing traffic down. It increases the pedestrian accessibility. It provides a nicer facility for everybody that's using it. Um, 
it's just it's a win-win really. Well, you're, gonna, but you'll still try and work some of that in for St. John's and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yep. We're going to get that built that parking piece in there for St. John's. You bet. Yep. Um, so I mean, as we talked about it, we felt like you know if it's so if it's a little bit of a situation where it's like the city doesn't want us. It's you know I can see you have constituencies that are kind of split between the two sides, right? We're we're okay with saying hey. MnDOT's looked at this, we pretty feel pretty strong, we're gonna make a decision to move forward with A. We're not gonna go forward without you, but we're not really saying that you have to make that decision and then we'll react. We're willing to say, we'll go up front, we'll make that decision in partnership with you, but we'll kind of be the bad guy, maybe, is a way to look at it and say, MnDOT feels very strongly that A is the right solution for Highway 30, and we're willing to put our necks out and say, we're gonna do this, you know, not, in opposition to you, but with you, but being the, being kind of the decision maker. Like Sandy said, really kind of taking that engineering judgment and saying, we really feel like this is the right decision to make. And we're, we're, we're okay with doing that. Well, I, 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 I myself kind of had that feeling was going to go that way from the get go. But as long as we can work some of this stuff in, you know, like the parking, the lights, uh, might have to do some no parking stuff on some intersections so the trucks can get around and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is your role. <laughs> yeah, but it's not, those days are kind of gone where, where the DOT comes in and says, it's our role, we're gonna do what we want. And so I don't want you to take that message from what I'm saying. If the city is like absolutely dead set against that road diet, we'll figure out a way to make B work. But. And I'm not trying to say this to be, be like fear mongering, but it's not going to be pretty, especially on the south side. You pretty well showed that. that the most of nice. But we can make it work. And if so, if you guys are like, nope, we want our parking, we really feel like it, the B is the better option for our city, we're not going to force it down you, but we really, we're willing to take the lead on the A option as well. And you can kind of say, hey, Mendel wants to do this, and we're, we're going to go along with it. It's not our choice, but we'll let them do it. Anything else, guys? Do you have something else on for? No, I, I, I think that was really what I was going to add. And it's just like, you know, it's the acknowledgement that, like, as you were saying, it is our roadway. Um, we really do try to sit back and listen, and that will continue to happen. Um, but yeah, because of the split, and there really wasn't a clear, um, you know, guidance out of the, the community, I feel like, um, you know, it is good for us just to take the lead and, and make a, a strong decision based off of the information we have. So. Anything from the table? Any other questions or discussion up here? It's like a shrug of the shoulder. Yeah, she walks. Yeah, yeah. Six and one half dozen of another. I mean, part of me says, why do you have to do the road diet when there's nothing that would identify it as being a problem? It's just because that's what works in other places and it's the thing to do. So the state goes that way. But I tend, after talking to you the first time, I came in adamantly against it, and I left just that short presentation looking at the prints, thinking that it is. Plus, the way, as far as getting to the ADA compliance, that seems to be the way to go with way less problems. Yep. So, to me, that, that part's probably more important, but I do get sick of hearing the road diets everywhere. 25 miles an hour everywhere in Rochester. It's like, come on, man. I mean, it, it doesn't fit everywhere, but I think there's more to it. I feel better, and I just vented that, so it doesn't feel nope. better. Yeah. Yep. Anything else? What is the timeline for like when we start and we go? Good question. So um, I have too many projects. This is <laughs> this is scheduled for <laughs> December of twenty six. Exactly. Construction after July first of twenty seven. So it's it's actually twenty eight dollars, our dollars, twenty eight. So it'll be starting after July first of twenty twenty seven. There's traffic lights that. Yeah, yeah there there is is more. we can do traffic lights, right? right. Yeah, there will be new signal at 63 and, and 30. Um, so a little more, to speak a little more to the schedule, so our next step is really to really, once we have kind of a decision made here tonight and the city's okay with moving forward, I, and I'm not saying you have to be 100% on board, but this that's the direction we're going is, is the option A. Um, the design team will then really start digging into the design of it, and then we'll have another meeting once we get that design kind of laid out is you know we, we threw out that big layout 
That's kind of a, that was like a sketch level. We'll have a little more detailed one with a lot more of the nuances worked out. We'll bring that back to the public, to the neighborhood. We'll talk about it. Make sure we're not missing anything else. Kind of like the parking at St. John's, you know, that nothing else jumps up at us and says, hey, this is, we got to deal with this, you know. Um, so we'll have that meeting. Um, that would probably be springish of next year. Uh, and then after that, we'll move through for approval of that and then go into the actual design of the road and plans. So, yeah, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll go pretty quick now to get that layout developed. And then, but we'll definitely come back and have another conversation. Well, that's a good time for us to actually decide and discuss what we want in those boulevards. So we have time to <coughs> think about that and incorporate what we would want to actually do there. So, yeah. um, but we incorporate that in with the approval of that geometric layout in the spring. So. Yeah. Um, we'll obviously want to incorporate um, people's energy, see if there's any possibility, if there's going to be a lot torn up in the boulevards, if um, lines can be um, underground. Yep. And then we do get questions throughout the year periodically when you do the intersection and the traffic lights, if a left turn to the east is going to be incorporated, and that still might have to be designed out. No, we've done some studies on that. At least with the light, you might have to work with a versatile lane both ways, but the light will accommodate left yes. turn to the east. To the east, yep. And not a separate turn lane. We, right. We went through that study. But a sequence of left turn yep. option is available. Yep. And then obviously our fire department and Homestead uh, Company, uh, law enforcement, is hoping that EVP yep. can be incorporated yep. into that too. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again. We'll be looking forward to the next presentation. It sounds good. We'll see you hopefully on March. All right. All right. We'll talk before then too, because we'll work through that that boulevard question. Okay. And you can stay for the whole week if you want. <laughs> Or you can go on to your next day. <laughs> There's always another thing. <laughs> As Tom said, this is one of the All right, that'll take us to uh, Schumann Business Park 5th, United Therapeutics, Sack of Black. <clears throat> Craig Britton's here from Winsett Engineer for United Therapeutics. He will present to discuss the possibility of deferring the sack and whack for outlet A, Schumann Business Park 5th. Typically, when a portion of a flat is shown as an outlot, the SAC and WAC are not paid until development occurs. United Therapeutics has been working with People's Energy on solar array on outlet A that will benefit the new building. The solar array takes up the majority of outlet A, which could be considered a development. So what we're gonna do, we got the map and stuff in front of us, Craig. We're gonna let you stand up and tell us. So, okay, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to come and present tonight. Um, so, again, my name is Craig Britton. I'm an uh, engineer with WinSeth representing United Therapeutics um, on their proposed development. So, this is on Schumann Drive, just on the west side of that. Um, and so, we're uh, requesting that the Council consider deferring uh, the assessment specifically on Outlot A, which is on the west side of the uh, BP easement there. It's about 15.3 acres in area. And um, uh, we're asking for the uh, deferment of the SAC and WAC for a couple reasons. Uh, one, typically SAC and WAC fees are assessed uh, to developments for um, any infrastructure improvements. So anything that's in place like water towers, uh, wastewater treatment facilities. Um, in this case where there's solar planned on that outlet A, uh, that will have no impact on the sewer and, and water uh, facilities. Um, so that is that is one of the reasons. Um, solar does have a shelf life. Um, there is certainly a possibility that that portion of the property could be developed um, in the future through a replat, um, and then you know there's a possibility a, a building could go up in, in 15 to 20 to 25 years. So, uh, so we're not looking for a waiver of the flat and sack. We're, we're uh, simply asking for the uh, deferment of that at such time until that develops in more of a traditional sense uh, with buildings uh, that again would have impact on the sewer and water uh, facilities. Uh, the main objective of the solar garden is to provide 
uh, solar for uh, the United Therapeutics facility. Um, however, the intent is to um, have this uh, connected to the grid. So if there is excess power, that would go back um, to um, peoples in, that, uh, in the grid. Um, that would be a benefit for uh, the users within that grid for a couple of reasons. One, um, there wouldn't be as much demand on the grid because uh, United Therapeutics would have um, a good amount of their power needs uh, serviced by the solar garden. Um, and then the other thing, is with the excess power, that would be a benefit um, in the event that the um, facility isn't using the amount of power generated from the solar, um, it could be placed back in the grid. So that is the intent of the solar as well. So, um, so um, thank you for consideration and, and uh, here to answer any, any further questions you may have. So you're just, you're still just asking for a deferral, not a forgiveness. Correct, okay. correct. Yeah, and the reason that it, it's coming up at this point in time is we're finalizing uh, the development agreement, and this is one of the items that the um, council would take council action um, uh, to include in the in the development agreement. Questions, guys? So we're essentially being asked to, for now, prorate the SAC and WAC. Just taking out the or the who's going to defer that aspect of my answer. So whatever percentage of the whole area that is, we just take that off for now. Correct. And it would still apply to the lot one block one on the east side. <clears throat> yeah. Would that transfer of ownership change on this piece of property <clears throat> too? Or how would that work? Like if they sold it to someone else, would that deferral go on with them, mm -hmm. or would it? And that could be a negotiating item with them if they would want to. Because the price, or however they want to do it. But yeah, anytime the development would occur, then they'd be charged. Yeah, that, that, and that's a good question. The development agreement would live with the property, so if it lands <coughs> and somebody developed, then then it would apply. The second lap will be assessed at that time. All right. I don't see it. I don't see a problem with it. I'm willing to uh, <clears throat> go for uh, deferring it. I guess it just kind of caught me off guard, Craig. At first, the first time we kind of met and talked, I thought it was just going to kind of be a couple acres up in the corner up there. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and that the solar design hasn't fully gotten underway yet. That'll start here in November. So uh, this was one of their initial initial concepts, just looking at the overall how can you maximize the site to get the, the largest array um, on the property. Um, you know, there it could look a lot different than than what it is on, on paper. Here. If there's a change in your second white piece in the meantime, it's will it be at a new rate or would it be a new rate? Yeah. Does this affect, is this impervious, how does this affect impervious surface? Is the pond still going to handle it? That's my question. Good question. Um, and we are working on the ordinances for, um, we don't have an ordinance that deals with um, solar. So. Well, I understand that, but what I'm saying is, is, is the pond that we're proposing for them to put in will handle whatever. Supposed to take okay. care of the 30 acres, right? Right, it's supposed to take care of the 30 instead of just half, right? We'll work through it all, yes. Okay. Yeah. You understand what I'm asking, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll work with you on that to make sure that those calcs are in there. But yes, there, there is a computation for the, you know, the angle of the, of, of yeah. the panel itself. I'm sure there is. Yeah. I just want to make sure the pond's going to. And, you know, like I said, the first vision we kind of saw was a little smaller than this and figured the pond was great, so I just want to make sure that 
Yep. Front off parts taken care of. Yep. yep. Good question. We'll make sure that's taken care of as well. Well, I, if all that's taken care of, then, uh, I think we can make this work, affirm it like this. Great. I have no problem with it. Yeah, no, that's fine. Thanks, Josh. Any other questions for Craig? <coughs> so do we need a uh, okay. motion? Okay, so we need a motion to consider deferring sack and whack charges for outlaw eight. I'll we'll make that motion. We have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second that. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Great. Now, we have a variant. Variance on 404 Fifth Avenue Southeast, Mike Conti, 404 Fifth Avenue Southeast, requested a four foot variance from the required 10 foot setback between structures, which is section 1305.05. He is seeking his variance in order to build a 26 by 32 garage where his current 20 by 22 garage sits. The garage is eight feet between structures, and due to the increase in size, he is asking for a variance to be six feet between structures. The planning Commission held a public hearing to recommend approval based on the findings of the facts. Finding one, the request of variance is in harmony with the purposes and intent of the ordinance as it properly continues to stay as a residential lot. Finding two, the request of variance is consistent with the comprehensive plan as the variance will not change the character of the original intent of the residential lot. Section, or finding three, the property owner does promise to use the property in a reasonable manner as garages are allowed in residential zones and permitted to continue in this area as a character of the neighborhood. Finding four, the landowner has not created a unique circumstance only wishing to increase size. And finding five, the variance will maintain the essential character of the local locality by continuing to keep as a residential garage. So P and Z's all looked it all over and feel, we, feel we were fit. We were fine with it. It really only affected, like, the garage would be a couple feet closer to his house yeah. when he redoes this, and it didn't really affect the neighbors or the fence lines or anything. <coughs> so all those other setbacks are basically staying the same? Yes. Side, back, and everything else. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, this side yard is six feet versus three, so yeah, it's... Including his own property. Mm -hmm. Questions, Josh? No, it sounds like a reasonable request. Brent? No. Jeremiah? Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't think this is anything unusual. I know, but that's what we're doing. Staff got anything to Anything? Okay. All right. So the council action request is to approve the variance request as recommended. We have a motion. So we have a motion. We have a second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. 20.4 CIP. It's called the user error. Is that what it is? I think so. Oh, it is real well. You're right. It was a pretty easy fix. <laughs> Staff to say the assessment hearing for the 2024 CIP, which includes improvements on Bird Bowler and Southeast. Street Court Southeast, Highland Court Southeast, Fifth Street Southeast. The resolution needed is to declare the cost and order preparation of the assessments for the 2024 capital improvement project. The total cost for improvements was two million five hundred seventy-two thousand nine hundred thirteen dollars and fifteen cents. The city portion is two million two hundred ninety-five thousand four hundred sixty-two dollars and thirty cents. Cost to be assessed against the property owners is two hundred seventy-seven thousand four hundred fifty and eighty-five cents. An additional resolution is needed to call the public hearings on the assessment. Staff is recommended that the public hearing be held at the fire hall on November 12th, 2024, at the regular council meeting. Did they get that blacked out today? Yeah. All right. Yeah, looks good. So, council acts request is to adopt a resolution declaring costs to be assessed in order of preparation of the proposed assessments in connection with the 2024 capital improvement project. Motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Yeah. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That one carries. 
Number two, adopt a resolution going hearing on assessments for the 2024 capital improvement project. You want to call on November 12, 2024, declare it all ready to be. Is that what you want? Yes. All right. Yes. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. That will take us on to resolution requesting MSAS funding. Minnesota State Aid Street Project. During the planning of the 24 CIP project, the City Council approved a resolution 2023-5, a resolution requesting the Commissioner of Transportation approve advancement of Municipal State Aid Street Project financing. Unfortunately, the process seems of the advancement wasn't completed on midnight's end. So City Engineer Obernolte has been working with Fosto Cabral. District 6 engineer, and he has requested that the council submit a new resolution with the updated figures. Note that the resolution will still read as if we were requesting the advancement in 23. The advancement will pay ourselves back for money spent during the Burke Boulevard Street project. Are there questions for Jim? So what, what happened there? Um, so we submitted everything, and um, we submitted for our, our reimbursement, which was actually, we're allowed to submit for 95% before we even set construction. And we were not paid all of that. I'm um, too busy trying to figure out cannabis legislation, I'm guessing. I have no idea. Um, but so we, I did ask for it to be tracked down as to what happened and it never actually had gone through completely. Is so that funding that can be used every year though? Yes. This is funding we can use every year, but since the project was that year we have it. Well I'm just saying because it got upheld a year, we're still putting it in as twenty twenty three. So it shouldn't come back and bite us because they didn't get anything done is what I'm asking. No, and we're borrowing ahead anyway. Right. Yeah. Um so and if we look at our resolution from the Last year, it actually we were borrowing a lot more. Um, so the amount that we need to complete the project actually went down, um, and so we aren't borrowing as many years ahead anymore. Um, the project still, the date of the project still has to match when we designed and did the project, um, but. You notice in the resolution there were some dis uh, disbursements there, so they've already made some payments to us. Um, and then, so we have a total estimated left, and we are eligible to do five times what our allocation is. Um, so, what I was told is they weren't allowed to now process a resolution with the wrong numbers from a previous year, or the numbers from a previous year, they needed numbers from this year, so they needed a new resolution um, with all the updated numbers, and therefore we aren't asking for the whole five times our allocation anymore. Um, we are only asking for the 648000 that we need for the portion of the project that is eligible for our state aid funds. Okay, any other questions for Jenna? All right, what the council needs to act on is to approve a resolution 2024 a resolution requesting the Commissioner of Transportation approve advance of a municipal state aid street project financing. No motion. I'll move to approve it. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Right, that takes us on to Iron Library. After reviewing numerous applications and interviewing a number of candidates, we are recommending Miranda. This sounded be good. Kowalski. Whoa! <laughs> Council oh, can't say Cabral, but you can say that. <laughs> 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 
approve or deny Miranda to be hired for position of library aid at pay grade six, step two. Questions? Any questions for Rain on this? She's the right hire? She's the right hire. I'll move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Right here. I'm trying to say that name, but I can handle the next thing. You see me do it twice, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, right. I can handle this next one. Right. Sure. Uh, public works custodian, custodial position due to the Due to the approved custodian hire turning down the job offer, staff here being a past candidate that also worked for the city plowing snow. It is recommending to approve hiring Jeremy Jackson, pay grade 7.4, to start as soon as possible. Council has requested to approve the hiring of Jeremy. Any questions or discussion? He's, uh, that's one that you recently met with, and already, he already, it's cool. We had a subsequent interview. So, okay. And that one well. Good. All right. Anybody make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the hiring of Jeremy Jackson. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll get in here as quick as we can. Ordinance Amendment Chapter 2. Attached, please find an ordinance amendment to Chapter 2, Administration and Operations. The amendment changes the salary of the mayor from six to eight thousand. Council members from four to six thousand per discussion and approval of the 2025 preliminary budget. The last salary change occurred in 2004. The change in salaries are going to affect January 1, 2025. So the second amendment is changing the time the council meets from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you were aware of this change earlier this summer to see how it affected the general public, and to date the city hasn't received any concerns with the time change. As this is the first reading of this ordinance, no action is required. On either one, Cheryl? Correct. All right, All right. that takes us out of the motion of general business, Mayor Staff Consult Report. Mayor's report for tonight. We're going to send our sympathies to the family of Richard King. Richard was 100, was he sure? Mm -hmm. The much anticipated fire department open house is tomorrow night from 5 to 8 p.m. Our little scissors just love it. We get all ready to go down there? Right. It should be a nice night. That's going to be a packed house. Yep. Get there early if you want to put out a hot dog. And thank you, Brandon, and all the firefighters. That was a great open house breakfast you had out there at the Legion Sunday, that was a huge turnout when I was there too. Yeah, it was quite about the same numbers as what we typically do, but it was a little bit different. Came yeah, early. Football game, I think, played a part in when our big rush came through, so it started yeah. rough right away in the morning. So. They did another great job. St. John's Fall Festival is this Saturday. Check out the Sturfield Star for details. Family Services is still hosting a session on dementia October 15th at the United Methodist Church. Check the star for more details. And don't forget the Health and Wellness Fair is October 29th from 9.30 to 11.30 at the Center for Active Adults. That's all I got. This is on the uh, City Administrative Report. Uh, due to having a chance to visit family last week out of state, uh, Ooh. Any questions for the administrator? All right. Thank you, Bill. Finance Director Carly, you got anything? Yes, still uh, working on the budget for 2025. We did get um, numbers from Blue Cross Blue Shield in. Um, we had estimated that 15%. They came in at 13%. So they, we don't, uh, we're not seeing you know, a whole lot of savings there, as well as just kind of as everybody ages up a year, um, we see those increases as well. Uh, on Thursday, we will get the last input for um, estimating what the inflation is going to be for the salary um, going forward for 2025. So we will have some better numbers to use, but at this point, it's it's gonna look like, um, it's gonna probably be pretty similar to what we had in that preliminary budget and the only cutting um, would be moving down on capital spending 
that's kind of what we need to do at this point. Good. Any questions for Carl? <clears throat> Good. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Public Works Director's Report, Sean. There's a report there. I uh, just want to let you guys know, Craig, you especially friendly that the black counting's done. And they also took that hump out on Sunday's so ninth. Yeah. Yeah. What was was that all tree roots or what was that? From? No, I think it's my opinion is it's frost heating the storm sewer because the storm sewer is so shallow and the cold air travels down the storm sewer and it's forcing up. May do it again in the future. I, but so you guys are shaved it down and then did you patch over it then again? Or we just it? took the blacktop out and then lowered the blacktop, but we didn't pull the whole storm sewer to fix it. You probably have to insulate beneath the storm sewer. Well, that's nice to know that. That's a coffee spill and bump there, man. So, good morning. Well, it's fixed. So, it should be taken care of. Because it'll spill when it's in my cup holder, so I just pull it All right. Well, they got to take care. I thought about it. And you're going to keep the parks open as long as you can, huh? Parks are all like we always do that. Good. So, I do see a forecast for 29 degrees next week for a little under 29 the other morning. So, we usually, if they're forecasting the mid 20s, then we're going to close, but they won't freeze at 29 to where they break or anything. But they start to get to mid 20s, they forecast that when we're closing them. All right, any questions for Public Works? Doing great. Keep it up, guys. Thank you. City Engineer, Anna, you got a report for us? Well, now that blacktop's down, Snow will be following up with grading and getting some sod in and wrapping it up for the winter. So when do people, when are they allowed to drive on it again? Like a couple the days? The asphalt? Yeah. No. Today. They can already, today? Yeah. Yeah, I just drove by and I've been checking all week because I could see it was graded last week. It sure looked good when I drove by today, but they're just finishing up the end, coming north again. Wow. Um, yeah, there'll be some happy campers there. Mm -hmm. will be. That, that neighborhood has been the best. They have been very, very considerate. I've talked to several of the neighbors, and uh, uh, from Dylan was huge for that project. I, every one of them that I spoke to mentioned that it's the communication made all the difference in the world. And apparently, you know, we didn't get the updates every week, but I think he continued to do it every week with the, the people, right? So. He, you know, know. he took the time to do a lot of stuff himself. Like he was putting the street signs back in and just he's up there the whole time. So he was helping to do stuff since he was up there and he was great. Yeah, there was a couple headaches obviously, but every I didn't hear any major gripes. They had to deal with so much rain and flooding that whole neighborhood. They they were Well it didn't help that we had the big storms and lost all the trees and luckily you guys were nice enough to come and get the trees, but that's all in the middle of the whole with summer. It's like Everything is on top of each other, so. Glad it's almost over. Anything else for Jeff? Jenny, you got anything else for us? And not at this time. All right, thank you. Um, Nate, you gonna report anything while you're here? Just you're a here? couple quick things. Um, I, we on um, Thursday at 6 p.m., um, we're having an author presentation. Uh, Teresa Wilhelm Waldorf is a uh, historian who, um, you know, um, if you have any interest in World War II or uh, thought the movie Oppenheimer was awesome, this is going to be a really good program to see. Um, her uh, father was one of the chemists who worked on the Manhattan Project, and um, she's got quite a story to tell, and um, I'm hoping that we get a good crowd for it. Um, also, on Monday, our pumpkin decorating kit goes live, and uh, we are very excited by our special pumpkin donor this year. Quite a guy. Anything else, Nate? No, oh, that's it for me. Any questions for Nate? All right, thank you for the update, Nate. Now, Fire Chief. Chief, what do you got for us? Well, you, uh, you took most of my talking points in your marriage report, so the only thing I've got to add is uh, a couple of grants that we were waiting to hear back now. We did not receive any funding from either of those grants, so I'll be working with Carl and our secretary to kind of realign our 
capital accountant our replacement schedule before the end of the year so we can make some decisions on priorities for what our next step is. So. All right. You all ready to go for tomorrow night though, huh? Really? What time do the doors open? Five o'clock. How about for the early birds? Isn't there an early bird session? Three thirty. Oh, there'll be people around by three thirty, four o'clock. The brass won't be ready. But. All right. Well, we'll see you down there tomorrow night. Uh, no pool director report tonight. Pool's done. Takes us to community commission board report to chamber of commerce. Nothing in the packet. I don't think they have anything going on right now. The <clears throat> AHRA. We've got a meeting next Tuesday. Finance, do we need a meeting? Not right now. Uh, library? Not right now. Park board? Nothing. Personnel? You guys had a lot of stuff. Minutes are in there and we voted on one of the action items tonight. Yeah. We're picking again. Planning zoning? Same thing. Minutes are in there we voted on an action item tonight. Public safety? I have nothing. We have nothing special. Uh, we've had a few different community events that we've been a part of with Stu Cruisers and the Fall Festival, but that's what I mean. You were homecoming. And homecoming, yeah. Is your no parking sign working over at the no. football field? No, it's still not on. Uh, no, I am gonna talk to Sean we need some more. I got argued today about there's <coughs> signs missing. So we need a few more signs up there if we're really gonna stop it. Well, you had your speed sign out there saying no parking. Well, still all there. Is that still there too? Yeah, I just dealt with it today. So, the <laughs> parking on the road. Does it say no parking right on the road? Uh oh, it's got right on the road. Well, there's a little bicycle. Well, you can't park on a bike. Well, it's. No. <laughs> did they take the signs again? I don't know. I don't know if they did. There's a telephone pole there that I'm assuming did at one point have a. Sign that no longer has a sign, and that was the argument. Well, the sign is up there; it's not right here. So, do you really think if we put six thousand signs down here, make <laughs> no, it's no, 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 no. no. So, said so when you put the pylons down there, everything they, they, they just don't care, and I'm sure they're all thinking there's no way they're going to come by and tag me in the hour and a half, three hour, two hours I'm here. You know, well, they one night they should. Oh yeah, no, he's done a good job. I'm coming there as a boy. 20 cars that got a ticket. They went oh, yeah. they went they, down after them. They have 20 cars <laughs> about just pulling. No parking. The school's the one that went on the street. Yeah. It's, it's helping during some of the ninth grade games and stuff down there in that field. After that first time when you came down, you got some. Yeah, sometimes. Well, that's nice. They didn't park right in front of it. Oh, yeah. But as soon as they showed up today, it was just everybody knows. And they're just, it's just more work for them. I don't get why they don't. I am. Uh, <laughs> I'll keep it up. Yep, thank you. Public works. We're talking about having a meeting. Yeah, we're going to probably have to have some kind of planning meeting. We're looking at some um, public works, complex infrastructure um, ideas. And then um, as we look to the future for how our city grows to complement the comprehensive plan. How we start looking at water and sewer infrastructure, yep. whether it be the mains, the wells, the towers, or the wastewater treatment plant. So we'd like to have an initial meeting with you to start taking a look at that. Right. We'll do some survey work with you to you find the times and dates. Yep. Ready? On your report. Roll call. Uh, just minutes. Um, just the highlight was recognizing Charlie Ryder, 48 years. With Homestead County for your apartments. <laughs> Transit advisory committee, no. no uh, they were going to meet next week, and now we just got noticed today that's supposed to fall under council. All right. No communication to the packet. <coughs> Let's see. Anyone want to use the open mic? All right. Make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.